In this video, we will look at creating two different barcode scanning web applications. One using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The second one used Vue.js in addition. We will also look at running the barcode scanner on a tablet. We'll look at the code for the applications. and also using Firebase database for the products. This particular barcode scanner will behave the same as a keyboard when you insert it into the USB port. When you scan a barcode, it will type out the barcode one character at a time and ends the barcode with a new line character. The scanner comes with a small book of commands that you can scan to turn on and off different features in the scanner, like the beep the scanner makes with successful scans. Set the laser mode, enable or disable the new line character at the end of the barcode scan. The system is using a cloud-based NoSQL real-time database called Firebase. Here's how you add a product into the database manually. The key in the system is the barcode. Add JSON strings to the database as shown here. It is highly recommended that you create a user interface for adding products instead of doing this manually. You can see the data as it is added down here. We will now look at the first example, which is quite basic, showing how to use Firebase database to retrieve product information based on the scan barcode, adding and removing elements into HTML dynamically, and some basic styling in CSS. The following lines add the Firebase library with the different modules. The Firebase.js file is the actual connection to the database. Logic.js is where all the JavaScript logic of the system is handled. This is for custom styling of HTML elements. Header is the top part of the page. The header class is used in the CSS to style the element. The item div is for listing the scanned products. We're using a table where the table headers or th elements are static, and then we use JavaScript to insert product data dynamically from the logic.js file. The no items div is only visible when no items have been scanned yet. The header class styles the top of the page. The table CSS makes sure the table fills the width of the screen. Here we set even table rows to a light gray color, and then the odd number table rows to a white color. This sets the background color and font color property of the table header. The onglobal keypress function is where the main functionality in the program happens. The function gets the character pressed from the E parameter. If the new line character is not found, we add the character to the last scan barcode variable. Otherwise, if we do find the new line character, we add the barcode to the list of scanned barcodes, if it's not already there in the barcode list. We also add it visually to the table. The other functions in the program are helper functions. In this function, we first go into the Firebase database and get a reference to the path, which can be used for getting values from that path. Here you can see an example of where the data will be read from. We do not fully take advantage of the real-time feature here. We just read the data once. Second parameter is a function that will be called after Firebase has finished reading the values from the database path. We use the function add dynamic product element to add the barcode, name, and description to the HTML table. By first finding the table element, creating a new table row in memory, and then appending the new row to the end of the HTML table. The remove element function is used for removing the div no items from the HTML document when we have added our first barcode into the HTML page. This function first finds the element with the name sent into the function and then removes it from the HTML document. In the second example, we will look at the Vue.js version of the system. It uses the data binding features of Vue.js to make it easier to keep the data up to date in the HTML page. In the top here, we still have the same JavaScript files as before. We have one new file for the Vue.js library, have also included Bootstrap, and have the style CSS file as before and the logic.js for our app. This div with id app will be used by Vue.js to indicate that this is where the app starts. We have a div that defines the header as before. This div defines the status bar. It displays either state adding or state deleting 
and uses the bootstrap classes alert and alert primary. The next line defines a div element that will be visible only if the scanned products list is empty. The next code block defines something that will only be visible if there are barcodes that have been scanned. It also has a for loop which inserts one item per scanned product. The class Jumbotron is from Bootstrap and has some predefined CSS properties for rounding off the corners and making the background light gray. Then we have an SVG graphic image and a name and a barcode from the scanned products object list. A horizontal ruler is then inserted. Under that is the count of how many items of this type have been scanned so far, and then the price per item. Then another horizontal ruler. At the bottom of the item is a subtotal. Fixed at the very bottom is the total for all the items. The header class has not changed since last example, and we still set colors and spacing. We override some of the properties like margin next to and spacing inside the Jumbotron, still overriding the body margins like in the previous example. Here we are setting font size and margins under all paragraph tags, setting some margins under all the horizontal rulers. Changing font size for header h1 element and subtotal element. Setting margins for the bootstrap alert primary class and the no items class. With the footer class, we set properties that make sure it's fixed at the bottom. Set the color of the text, font size, and some spacing. Then finally, setting some spacing for the totals div at the bottom. The variable operation state keeps track of the current state. It can be either adding or deleting. Total amount variable keeps track of the total and is listed at the very bottom of the user interface. Last scan barcode is the same as in the previous version of the system. It keeps track of the current barcode. List of scanned barcodes is an object list and keeps track of all the scanned barcodes including count and price. View app is set up after the page is loaded in the onload function. It also sets up a data property called scanned products that is used in the HTML code for loop. Here we have the same on global key press setup as in the previous example where the function is triggered every time a character in the barcode is entered. We do have different logic here, however, than in the other example. Last code is checked against two special commands, which are custom commands, to switch the system to either adding or deleting mode. This function will either add to the count or subtract from the count when barcodes are scanned. Hitting zero count will remove the item from the list. This function will load data from the database as before. But instead of just adding a string to the array variable list of scanned barcodes, we will add a JavaScript object with properties for barcode, name, price, and count. Then after adding it, we update the totals at the bottom of the screen. The value displayed is based on the total amount variable. If the barcode scanned is not command add or command delete, it will run the function process barcode to find out if the barcode is in the barcode list. If barcode do exist in the list, it will update the count and totals. If it does not exist in the list of scanned barcodes, it will load the data from the database and add it to the list. The following will show you an example of adding and deleting items in the system. Here you can see the two barcodes that we're going to use. They have been generated from a free online barcode generator. You can save the barcode as an image and print it out. Here we're deleting items from the list by first scanning the command delete barcode to switch the system over to delete mode. Then we switch it back to add mode. You can also use the web projects on a tablet using a converter which converts from standard USB to micro USB, as you can see in this picture. The good thing about web-based systems is that you can use it on any device with a browser, including TVs, tablets, phones, PCs, Mac, Linux, and many others.